For more on this story, we're joined by our Chief International Affairs Editor, Robert Parsons. And with us in the studio, he is a graduate student here in Paris and an activist, Shaugi Ahmed. Thank you for being with us. First, though, let's go to Khartoum. And uh, we're joined by Feras, one of the protesters outside of the compound. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. Thank you. The uh, last 24 hours have seen the police back down, the military step in overnight. It went off peacefully. What's the mood like where you are? Well, uh, from where I am, the situation is like uh, the roads are full of uh, military pickup trucks uh, filled with heavy weaponry. Uh, when I tried to go to the to the sitting today, uh, the police did not intervene or did not have their usual was securing the areas around the sitting. But uh, of course, that's uh, after last night, after the horrible attack of last night, where 23 people died. Uh, of the previous night? Yes. Yeah, Firas, tell me, what, what, we were reading reports that uh, the, the demonstrators are cheering the army. Can you confirm that? Yes, I can. The, uh, the demonstrators are cheering the army because the previous night officers opened up the gate of the military uh, head commandment for the protesters to take shelter and give some of their life protecting them while the regime is trying to attack, to and, kill them. And what's your uh, reaction to uh, this call issued by Sudan's ruling party for a demonstration on Thursday in support of Omar al-Bashir. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? There's been this call issued by Sudan's ruling party for a demonstration Thursday in support of Omar al-Bashir. What's your reaction? Yes, the, the ruling party is uh, calling in a desperate move, I would, I would say, uh, for demonstrators to back them up after they lost their legality, the, the roads told them that they don't want them. The, the, or the, whole, the whole people in Sudan are only agree, uh, agreed upon one thing, and they do not want this government. So people from the states are marching towards the sitting, and the government tried to block the basic means. They do not want the numbers to get larger, but demonstrators are still arriving at the sitting. So I don't think that uh, it would have the effect that they want. All right. Stay with us, Fierce, because I want to turn to, to Shaogi Ahmed and, and, and your reaction to what we've just heard. Just a reminder to, to people watching that uh, this compound, which is home to Omar al-Bashir, it's the Army Chief of Staff headquarters, it's located outside of the city center near the, near the airport. Your, your, your thoughts listening there to the fact that people are cheering the army? Well, uh, first of all, I would like to say uh, at the beginning that I would share like a condolences for the people who we lost during the last couple of five months. Um, and uh, secondly, it's uh, technically the, the command is, uh, I would say, it, it's not outside the center. It's, it's more like near to the center of Khartoum. It's not that far, uh, geographically speaking. Um, so... What the, the movement that has been done by the government is trying to spread some fear by the movement that, 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 that they are trying to spread fear by moving like vehicles and uh, uh, through the streets. And um, however, like most of the things that, uh, that, that, that they are having, that they were creating is, uh, I'm just so sorry, I'm just like, Instead of fear, they're 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 creating a backlash, is what you're saying. Exactly, and it's 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 taking a lot of time for people to understand an international uh, effect. Because talk us through this: the protests begin in December. Yes. At first, people are fed up over cost of living increases, the high inflation. It quickly turns into calls for Omar al Bashir to to leave power, and now. The, this sit-in. Why now have we seen the beginning of this sit-in outside of the army headquarters? Well, I, it's it's more like a respo um, a responsibility from some of the military, and especially what I'd say from the low ranks, 
uh, where people from the, the military, from the low ranks, are feeling like there is a need to respond to the calls from the people outside. However, uh, you can see the differences when, when it comes to the middle and the high ranks, where the people like varying the, the needs and they feel that the, the, the high ranks have their own like commitment or loyalty to the, to the regime. So when they order the people from the low ranks, uh, there is this conflict that's happening and you can see it on the street right now, where some of them uh, and some of like militias, I would say, they're spreading fears and these militias, they don't relate to the, the National Army. They relate to the regime themselves. Yeah, you were, you were spelling this out for us 24 hours ago, Robert yeah. Parsons, this, this dichotomy within the ranks of the security apparatus. That's right. I mean, the, exactly as I, I guess was saying, there's a split between the middle ranks and, and, and the lower ranks on the one hand and the upper ranks who have gained significantly, materially and otherwise, from their association with the regime. But the, the danger, I think, for the the higher ranks of the military at the moment, it explains why they're beginning to waver, is that they don't want to end up on the wrong side. If they feel that uh, Omar al-Bashir is going to lose this, uh, they'll start sw sw switching sides to the, the demonstrators pretty fast. And I think we're reaching that tipping point at the moment when you see the police saying they're not going to in intervene, when the lower ranks, middle ranks are not intervening, where apparently a, even a, a, a chief of staff spoke yesterday about the army doing the natural thing to defend uh, the, the demonstrators. That will make people inside the military in the upper ranks of the military, start to worry that they're, they're picking the wrong horse if they stay with Bashir. Did you see all this coming? Um, I would say yes. From the low ranks, yes, because at the end, they are Sudanese. They have the same blood, the same uh, commitment, the same loyalty to the people. Uh, however, I would say it's not easy to, um, to, sp to spread this mentality within the army because we're talking about a 30-year system and regime. Well, the, the other, just to add to, to what you were saying then, you, you know, it, it's a big step for the lower, lower ranks to do this. Clearly, they, they must have had sympathy with the demonstrators for a long time. They too suffer from the same economic plight as the, as the demonstrators. Their families suffer from the same economic plight. But to take that decision puts you out on a limb. You know that if you lose that battle, you're going to get punished. So that's a very, psychologically, it's a very important turning point that they've had the courage to do that. It does rather suggest that they think they're on the winning side. Yeah, uh, we're seeing that some of the chants, fear us, if you're still with us there from Khartoum, uh, uh, some of the chants by protesters are fall, that's all, and the people want to build a new su Sudan. Uh, Sudan. Uh, w what for you will be the tipping point? It's your question. What will be the so tipping? Like, what will be the tipping point, Firas, for 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 Omar al Bashir to leave? What will it take? I think very. I think it will be very very soon, <laughs> because uh, as you see, the roads are already shifting. Things are changing. There is no intervention now, and. Uh, the army is uh, more on the roads now, and they are taking control of things here. But uh, <clears throat> the, the regime has uh, more tries uh, or more tricks up their, their sleeves, which do not appear to be working anymore. One final question for you, Shaogi Ahmed. The, the story of what's been going on since December it hasn't always been in the news here in France. You, as a, as a Sudanese living in, in Paris, we saw, though, this week, these images go viral of this woman. Uh, the, she's been dubbed the Nubian Queen. Uh, and uh, she's been, uh, there's a, a, a photo of her that went viral on Twitter. We've, been, we've heard her singing at these rallies. Uh, what do you make of that image? Um, first of all, uh, it makes a sound of the, the peace as you see, like she's wearing white, which is the sense of peace, first of all, and at the same time, the role of women. You can see it also, like the, I mean, doing in a conservative country where people normally women cannot like speak up or something. You can. She's putting herself up and speaking up about what's happening. So we can see that right now, the revolution or the, the peaceful protest is happening over there. It's it's spreading uh, the meaningful uh, context for the people around the world that that we are trying to bring peace. We're trying to move on. We're trying to seed hope. It's 
not just her either. I've seen images of other women leading the, 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 the chanting in the crowd as well. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and with all the attention that we've had here, of course, to nearby Algeria and the events there, uh, what are your thoughts in respect to the fact that you have this going on right now in Sudan? Well, I would say that people there, yeah, I mean, this is one of the fears, you know, because um, in China, we're talking about a region, which is, I mean, Sudan with, with the old Arab Spring and what happened within the, the region in Egypt and, uh, and other countries. Uh, I would say like Sudan has its own cultural background that, that maybe we share the same, we share a lot of, uh, intersect a lot with other countries, but um, we're not going to reach this level. We believe in peace, we believe in coexistence. We have many different tribes. We coexist since be before the, this regime, and we can do it again right now. All right, Shaogi Ahmed, I want to thank you very much for, for dropping into our studios. I want to thank Feras for being with us uh, from Khartoum, France 24 International Affairs Editor Robert Parsons.